Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Drop this stuff. How's it going? Good. Hey. Well, Balance. awesome. <laughs> Could it be any better? <laughs> okay. How about uh -huh. you? <laughs> we might have to have a conversation after service for that one. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, so, well, first, who asked that question? Nancy? No. <laughs> She's so, the reader. First, things are okay. I'm, I'm managing. There's a lot going on in personal life right now that is making... It is keeping me on my toes with practicing the practice. Like, for real, because that's what we're talking about today is, you know, this idea of getting grounded back in principle. Because that's what CSL does January of every year is go back to basics. And how fitting it is that going back to basics is where I am right now is reminding myself that this works. Like, that's the only reason I'm here. Well, I mean, I love you all. But other than that, why am I a CSL minister? Why am I a practitioner of science of mind and religious science? Because I believe in this, and I know it works. So how am I, Nancy? I am great. Even in the midst of everything in life that is going on, that which I am, the I am that I am, maintains the ground upon which this body stands, and for as long as I practice the practice, all is well. So, and that's the, no. <laughs> Just saying. So, if I were to ask you, well, let's three steps back. So Tracy and I are driving in, and I'm not sure exactly what, I'm still getting familiar with the new area that we live in. But we passed this, this church, and there's a cemetery, and, you know, there's the church that's connected to it. You know how the churches have the placard thing where they say what the, today's, today's sermon is about. And the topic was something specific, but I want to ask you, piggybacking off of that, and I'll get to that in a second. If I were to ask you how big is your bank account, what are you quantifying that by? Are you quantifying your bank account based upon how much there is in it? Because that's not your bank account. Your bank account, because if, say your bank account has $100 in it. It can hold 101 though, right? So 100 clearly is not how big it is. And if your bank account can hold 1,001, then clearly the 100 doesn't quantify that my bank account is 100. No, your bank account ultimately must be infinite, technically, because it could hold a billion, right? Like if you had a billion dollars, couldn't your bank account hold that? Couldn't it hold a trillion? So how big is your bank account made me remember this idea of how big is your faith, which is what they were talking about today. How big is your faith? Which brings us to this idea of what we're talking about today. Because if we're going to get grounded in what it means to practice science of mind and religious science, then we really have to know what that ultimately means. Having a firm foundation in the teaching slash philosophy of science of mind and spirit gives us the ability to work with love and law and to be active and conscious creators in this thing called life. Understanding spiritual principles and choosing to govern our lives on them frees us from the confines of precedent. So let's start with the ABCs of SOM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this frees us from the confines of precedent. Are we bound as a teaching, are we bound as an individual based on precedent or based on principle? If we're based on principle, then we really understand the ABCs of science of mind, right? Because that would mean we know what principle is. We know what that means. We, we, we understand what exactly it means to be someone governed by principles. Like, what are the principles? Don't answer that, but we would have to know that. So, 
In Matthew 7, 24, every one then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the rock is our teaching, science of mind and spirit. A lot of people take the end spirit off, which is fine, they abbreviate it. But science of mind and spirit is this philosophy. If I were to ask you, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean to practice, <laughs> to be someone who does this thing? So when we were at the, at the most recent uh, affinity group meeting for the LGBT group, uh, one of the things that came up was this idea of an elevator speech for what we do. So that sort of inspired this slide. So how do you explain what CSL or religious science or science of mind and spirit is to someone who is not familiar or has the wrong idea about who we are and what we study and practice, right? Like, what do you say? How do you explain it to them? Why is it important to know? So Eric Butterworth said, we need larger maps. We need a larger thought of God and a new insight of ourselves. Let's pause on that for a moment and take that in. We need larger maps and a larger thought of God and a new insight of ourselves. What is the benefit of larger maps, larger idea of God, and a larger insight, a greater expansive insight into ourselves? Because ultimately when we are explaining this philosophy to someone else, some way that is what should come through. Not just something to appease them, to get them off of our backs, and to make them think we're not in a cult. <laughs> because a lot of times when I hear people explain what we are and what we do, they're explaining it in an attempt to avoid rather than to be clear and state what is. I want to make sure you understand what we're not. I want to make sure you, you don't think, because one of the first things we say is, so I go to this place called CSL, and we study religious science. No, it's not Scientology. Like, that's part of, that's like saying, Hi, I'm Reverend Ray Anderson. I'm a minister. No, I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> like, somehow, minister and that go together, and religious science and Scientology go together, and if you speak from a place of clarity and understanding then we need not worry about all of this other stuff. But how clear are we on who and what we are? So Reverend Michael A. Madej says, Practical metaphysics is about developing and supporting the business of fully expressing our God nature. Ooh. <laughs> that, and that's just to the first comma. <laughs> Developing and supporting the business of fully expressing our God nature. That's what metaphysics is about. Goes on to say, each of us doing what Yeshua, Jesus, suggested we do with our lives. Following in his footsteps, knowing that all he did, we can do, and even more. That's a really big pill to swallow. And check this out. It doesn't matter if we believe he was an actual person who actually walked the earth or not. Makes no difference. If he is a simply a symbolic, metaphysical, metaphorical, poetic being, it makes ne'er no difference. Because we watch things like Man of La Mancha, Don Quixote de La Mancha, and we are inspired by this fictional character. We watch Star Wars and Star Trek, and we are inspired to be more like the Jedi. Do or do not, there is no try. And we make that the mantra by which we live. Yoda doesn't really exist, although on a certain level, is he not real because we know what Yoda is? Like Yoda exists in a certain level of consciousness, and based on that, does that not mean he is real? may not be a living, breathing being the way, but is real. Thoughts are things. 
And so when George Lucas fought this thing called Yoda, Yoda became a living being in the consciousness of... We get twisted and bent up on a lot of words a lot of times, and they trip us up. We get tripped up on this idea of God. Doesn't matter what you call it. Fully expressing our spirit nature. Fully expressing our nature of love. Fully expressing our nature of oneness. Fully expressing our nature of unity. Fully expressing our nature of creativity. Doesn't matter what you call it. A thing by any other name would smell just as sweet. But are we willing to do the work to get there? So Dr. Ernest Holmes said, when asked, what is this thing you call religious science, science of mind? Like, what is it? Dr. Holmes said, because he gave this definition for the teaching, religious science is a synthesis of the laws of science, the opinions of philosophy, and the revelations of religion applied to human needs and the aspirations of humankind. That's what this is. It's a synthesis of each of these things. That, because we are open at the top, should change and evolve as we do. So as science changes, this philosophy should change. As philosophy and the understandings of, whether it's Stoicism or whatever, as that shifts and change, so should our understanding of this philosophy as our human needs and aspirations and understanding about religions, whatever religions they are, as all of this shifts and changes, so should our understanding of this philosophy and application of it. Because that's ultimately the thing that matters. No one cares that you can make the best and most delicious lasagna in the world if you're never going to bake it. You could have a top-notch, blue-ribbon, ten-star, Iron Chef recipe if no one ever tastes it. What good is the recipe? So today we're going to sort of touch on the idea of the foundation of this teaching. The thing itself, the power, and the consciousness. So if I were to ask, is your house built on, sturdy, on a sturdy foundation... Just marinate to that for yourself. Just yeah, yeah. How big is my faith? What does it mean as we go into asking this? The thing itself, what is it? Don't read the words. Do not look at the man behind the curtain. But how do you explain? What is the thing itself? Anyone who wants to share? Source. Source. Divine intelligence. Divine intelligence. Life and love. Life and love. Right? So these things. The thing itself is whatever we are calling God. And there are some who say, well, how can you call God a thing? And it's an it. <laughs> because God is not this anthropomorphic deity that is bound by the duality and binary nature of masculine and feminine. God is neither he nor she. God is both and... And something that we, in our minds and consciousnesses right now, in these finite bodies, can't even vaguely comprehend. Anybody in... I shouldn't ask you this, but I'm going to. Anybody else in here like Tracy and I get the AARP magazine? <laughs> oh, yes, thank you! Oh, I love y'all even more. Because if y'all would have said, nope. I'm like, okay, Tracy, we got to find a new congregation. <laughs> So, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's this, this issue, and one of the things that they mention in there, there's an article in there that says, how well do you know your body? And they say, do you realize that you have more cells in your body than there are stars in the known universe? Hmm. So when you look up at the sky and you see infinite dots of white light, you have more cells in your body than that. That is God representing its infinite nature. And we cannot fathom, if I asked you, uh, Peggy, do me a favor. Um, tomorrow, can you count how many stars are in the sky over um, all of Maryland? And Peggy's going to look at me like, what? 
You want me to do what? Like, wait till it's a really clear night and, you know, get a calculator and count all the stars. Or let's drive down to the beach in Dover and count all the grains of sand on the beach. We can't fathom how much sand is on the beach. And yet it's tangible. So how do we think we can fathom that which is ineffable? That which is the numinous, that which is beyond time and space. One of the things when Doug wanted to sing the first song Doug's way, because I'm standing on solid ground, you're standing on solid ground, we're standing on solid ground, you're standing on... I don't sound exactly like that. <laughs> Breathe. But there's this idea, so... <laughs> So, there is this that is the divine, that is beyond measure, but in the song they mention, and I don't remember the, and I guess I could go back to it, but I don't remember, they mentioned that, when did it begin? And it said it began before time began. And one of the things when Doug was back there singing, he said, they're, they're, like, duh, like, time is a construct. So, but for us, can we understand what it means to not exist within time? When so much of our days and our lives are bound by how old are you, which is chronological. What date is today? What date goes on the check? What year is it? So much of what we do is based upon looking at the time, or when the sun is coming out of the sky, or like it's so... So how do we expand beyond that and recognize that that which God is, is boundless? Infinite, timeless. The thing itself is that creative power, creative intelligence. It is first cause, spirit, mind, God, whatever we're calling it. That is the thing itself. And if it is all there is, then isn't it sitting right where you are? And what does that then mean? What does it mean to let that idea wash over you? That you are the thing itself in human form. The power is an awareness of the indescribable. To come to know God, Spirit, as unconditional love, which is synonymous with freedom. That power must be your power right now. So anywhere in our lives where we do not feel free, how do we start to apply principle to it and understand that there are emotions, there are circumstances and situations that we very quickly want to bypass and malpractice over spiritually? Like it's, it's easy for us to glaze over the current potential conflict that is approaching this country right now. It's metaphysical malpractice and bypass to ignore that that is weighing heavily on certain people's minds. That it is very heavy in the consciousness of our country and the planet right now. It's metaphysical malpractice to ignore that and just say, it's all God. Well, it was all God before this came into being, was it not? So the question is, what am I holding in consciousness around it? Am I able to be as loving as I can to myself? Where am I at war within me? Am I at war with my weight? Am I at war with my job? Am I at war with my family? Am I at war with my sexual orientation? Am I at war with... Where am I battling and struggling within me? As, as I mentioned to a couple of people at the beginning, well, when, when Nancy asked me, and how are you? <laughs> so one of the things I did not share is one of my children will not say specifically which one, was in the hospital recently. One of the other ones 
broke his sobriety. There's a possible divorce. There's a lot of stuff. My mom is at a degree with uh, her experience of Alzheimer's where she is now urinating in various places in the house thinking that they are the bathroom. It's easy to, but it's all God, it's all love, that's all there is. And bypass it. And that's a misuse of this power. So how do we give ourselves permission to hold both and to feel the discomfort and work through it while also knowing the foundation upon which we stand, the foundation upon which we are created, and the foundation upon which life itself, there is only one life, incarnating itself in, through, and as us right now, and that life is God's life. Both and, not either or. The foundation of this teaching is how do, what did it say? Applied to human needs. Applied to human needs. Humans who need food, who need a home, who need shelter, who need medication, who need therapy. This philosophy is supposed to be assisting and something that can be applied to human needs. And yet because we find it easier to bypass, we don't. Consciousness is every, every thought. <laughs> Every thought, idea, and action is some part of consciousness. Every thought, every idea, all of it must be some part of consciousness. If that which God is, is all there is, then how is it possible for there to be a thought outside of God? There's only one mind, that mind is God's mind, that mind is always thinking, it is thought itself, it is ever creative, it is creation itself, and that mind is our mind right now, so when my mind thinks, the thoughts are already in the mind of God. So how could I think that I'm thinking a thought that I've never thought before? Then, <laughs> sorry, I just watched The Wiz, and I'm sorry. How could I think that I am not thinking creation, that I am not an active participant in this thing called creation, when consciousness is every thought, every idea, every action. Each person, community, and country has a consciousness expressing. Each person, each community, and each country has a consciousness. What is your consciousness? What is our consciousness? And what is our consciousness? Whatever country we are in. What is the consciousness of this country? What is the consciousness of this center? What is the consciousness of your home? And what is your individual consciousness? See, if we're going to get back to basics, then we have to really marinate on what is the consciousness by which I live, move, and have my beingness. Because if we don't pay any attention to this, then we don't know if we are acting based on precedent or principle. How many times do we say, same old, same old? How's it going today? Same old, same old. Or, same, another day. Different day, but same old. That's precedent. And I understand it's for ease of communication sometimes. And sometimes it's the easiest way for, for like, if, if, I'm, if I'm talking to Dawn and, like, I, I just want to cut, I just want to go straight to the, I just want to cut straight through. Then sometimes I'm going to say what I know is going to go right there. And as the conversation evolves, it is my hope that he's going to call me on something and say, I heard you and I feel you. Now let's evolve the conversation. Because if I say, same old, same old, same old, another day, different day, and he says, I know exactly what you mean. Misery loves company. 
where two or more are gathered in the name of misery, their misery is in the midst. How many of us are coming together in the name of scarcity and lack? How many of us are amening that when family members or congregants or whomever say, and we seal it with a, and so it is. Because we're not really thinking about what it means to have this governing principle of life itself. So in 1993, there were re revisions made and to the foundations class. And what was discovered by the instructors who you know, revised it were that these ten core concepts are basically the ten core concepts of the science of mind. These are the ten core concepts that they said... If you look through everything in the philosophy or whatever, like you can boil it down to these ten concepts. So, first one, oneness, for those who are way back. Oneness, triune nature, creative nature, prayer, wholeness, abundance, the reciprocal universe, forgiveness, immortality, and the Christ. Yes, Doug? What does number two mean? We're getting ready, thank you for mentioning that, because we're getting ready to talk about the top three. So the very first one, oneness. God is the source of all that is, and God is all that is. <coughs> Everything in the universe is made of the God substance and is a unique, individualized expression of God. So when that is the foundation upon which your house is built, does that not change? how the house is built. Meaning, remember when I mentioned way, way back when, the first time I went to Ground Zero after uh, most of the stuff was cleared away and they were getting ready to start building the new tower? And I spoke to someone there and they explained to me that in order, if you look at any of the skyscrapers, the taller it is, the deeper the foundation must be. And we never see the depth of the foundation. We never see the power and strength of how deep it goes. But as high as the Empire State Building, it must have deep roots in the ground. As high as the Twin Towers were, deeper in the ground. As high as a consciousness of knowing that that which God is, is what you are, how deep must our roots go into the very substance of creation if we are going to walk this walk as divine beings? So remember I mentioned the ARP magazine? One of the other things it mentioned in the know, How Well Do You Know Your Body is it said, do you know that your body emits light? And I'm thinking, this is an AARP magazine. Do you realize that your body emits light? How many years have we been saying that we are light beings and light workers and beings of light? And here it is in an AARP magazine where it's saying, do you realize that your body gives off light? Why do we not walk around like that, though? Why do we not walk around knowing that we are shining, that we are beacons of love and law, that when we speak, God is speaking? That when we move, it is God in motion. That when one of the practitioners or anyone prays, the prayer is praying itself. Why, why, why do we not live like that? So core principle number two. Triune nature. God expresses itself in three aspects. Spirit, soul, and body. Each human being also has these same three aspects. Thus, there is God as macrocosm and human beings as microcosm. As above, so below. As within, so without. So however you, you know, uh, choose to conceptualize the Trinity, that's basically what it says. Body, mind, and soul... Spirit, soul, body, how do you recognize that you have a nature made up of these parts? And yet these parts are never separate. They cannot be separate. They are all one. Creative nature. God thinks and the world comes into being. 
God thinks, and the world comes into being. Sue thinks, and the world comes into being. Juris thinks, and the world comes into being. Lisa thinks, and the world comes into being. Faith speaks, and the world comes into being. It's not just God, but it has to be God, 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 God. Spirit is each one of us. When we think, it comes into being. Likewise, all humans accomplish, all human accomplishments originate in thought. Our human thinking process is a reflection of the divine creative process in the microcosm. As we think, so shall it be. First two, we believe statements. We believe in God, the living Spirit Almighty. One, indestructible, absolute, self-expressing. One, one individual. One, power and presence. One. We forget that when we're looking at individuals, but there's still only one. Indescribable, absolute, and self-existing cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome, the infinite self-knowingness of God. It's how God knows itself. We believe, number two, we believe in the individualization of the spirit in us. And you know how, here I am, Dr. Ronnie, getting in trouble again modifying stuff. Because I, when I say these, I say we believe in the individualization of the spirit as us. And that all people are individualizations of this one spirit. Because it's not just in us. Once again, remember I said we get twisted on words and we think God is in us. Well then that's us and then God. Two separate. Because we could say, well God's not in some people. Well, no. God's in through and as all. So what anchors you to this foundation daily practice? Like, what do you do to anchor to this truth on a regular basis? Because everybody who has mastery of an art, whatever that is, always comes back to the realization that they must continue to practice. They come back to wax on, wax off. They come back to the basics of put the peppercorns in and it's the basics of. The basics of knowing that if this is what the chocolate chip recipe calls for, I can't just put extra chocolate chips in it because it changes the recipe. <laughs> When you wake, what is the first thought of your day? Are you sure? Or is that your first conscious thought of the day? Because it may be different. That may be your first conscious thought of the day. Because there may be a... So the idea is, if we're going to go back to basics, how do we get grounded in taking a moment to say, who? For real, for real, what is my first thought? What is the first thought I am choosing consciously, actively to put into the law? <laughs> what am I choosing to practice? How am I practicing the practice from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep? Consciously. How often during the day do you reacclimate yourself to truth? GPS. Your, your internal God positioning system. How often during the day do you let that recalculate and bring you back to the course you have selected to be on? Especially when there are wars and rumors of wars. Especially when you turn on and you find out that the first transgender person of the year has now been murdered. We're in what? Day five. When you hear about another this or another that that is still happening. How do you reacclimate both and, both and, giving space for sobriety is broken and know the truth. Chronic pain 
and know the truth. Alzheimer's and know the truth. Depression and know the truth. What are we doing to bring ourselves back to basics? What systems of support do you have? What systems of support do you have established in your life? Do you have friends, family, your go-to people, your congregational family? Do you have people that you know you can go to who will help you get back on track when you go astray? You know, oftentimes we'll go to the practitioners once again when something's going wrong. So Mary Ann, Sue, Dr. Ronnie. Yeah, I think it's everybody. I don't know who you're pointing at. So, I said Mary Ann first. So, we come to the practitioners, we say, something's going wrong, something's going wrong, something's going wrong, pray for me, let's fix it. But do we go to them when I say, Dr. Ronnie, life is great, pray for more and even more. Sue, life is amazing, pray for more and even more. Mary Ann, amazing, oh, the, more and even more. The majority of the prayer requests I get when I get prayer requests are... And I'm not saying don't, like, keep them coming. <laughs> keep them coming. But I'm saying, do you realize you can continue, you can ask for the good and the better as well? That's also part of your experience. The good and the even better that we can also pray on, pray for, and know in consciousness with you. But you have to have support. And then what practices do you engage in daily or start it with? What are your daily practices? To keep you grounded. And in case you didn't remember this quote I shared from the Upanishads the last week or week before, you are what your deep driving desire is. As your desire is, so will be your will. As your will is, so is your action, your deeds, the ways you move throughout the world. And as your deeds so shall be your destiny. Do we know what our deep driving desires are? If we don't, then look at what we do. The actions, follow it backwards. If what I tend to do is because of depression, sit in the house and mope and grope, that's my deed. Trace it back to what is my desire. If I'm angry, trace it back. What is my desire? Sadness, trace it back. Love, joy, and wonder, trace it back. The basics of this philosophy, you are God. So act like it. Like that's the gist of it. You are love, so act like it. You are wonder, so act like it. You are peace, so act like it. You are magic, so act like it. You are infinite in ways that you can't even remotely imagine, but do your best to act like that. Today's affirmation, there is one life. I'm going to read it first, and we're going to read it together. There is one life. Everything that has ever been created or ever will be created is manifested from that one. What it is, I am. Together, there is one life. Everything that has ever been created or ever will be created is manifested from that one. What it is, I am. Let's pray. Anchoring into this truth of knowing that what it is, I am, and what I am is it. That which God is manifesting in, through, and as me. And knowing that this truth must be true for everyone in this room, we anchor into this realization. We anchor so deeply that all we see right here and right now is the wonder of God, the wonder of joy, the wonder of peace, the wonder of infinite possibility. So wondrous is this infinite possibility that we see ways for peace to be. We see ways for peace to be. And because we see ways for peace to be, we know that in the mind of God, peace already is. And so that peace right here, right now, is the foundation upon which we walk. 
love, joy, health, and well-being is the foundation upon which we walk. And as I speak this, I speak these words from a place of deep, deep gratitude. Because what I know is that this philosophy works. And because I know this philosophy works, I know that these words already existed in the mind of God long before this body became form. And because it is in the mind of God, it is already created. It is already manifest. And so I, as this incarnation of God, step to a place of surrender and allowing that which God is to be God in me, to be God as me, so that God is in my mind. Love is in my words. Peace and joy abides in my emotions. And service is what my hands are used for. And knowing this, then I am able to right here and right now declare with great confidence and certainty that I am doing what is mine to do. And I know this truth for everyone in this beloved community. We are here right now at this time in history for a purpose. And so collectively we evolve. Collectively we shift our consciousness of individual, of community, and of country, and of planet by doing the work we are called to do on ourselves. Surrendering this into the law because I know it is good and oh so good and complete. Together, as a beloved community, we declare this knowing that the universe is already conspiring for its own good in, through, and as us. We say, and so it is. Amen.